Now, as I said, this is in a good approximation for small perturbations and for subsonic and supersonic values of m infinity. So note it's not valid for thick bodies, large angles of attack, transonic Mach numbers in the range of m infinity between 0.8 and 1.2, or hypersonic Mach numbers of m infinity greater than 5. So it would be useful to solve this equation to get the pressure distribution along some slender body, and therefore we would get a linear, linearized pressure coefficient. So if remember our definition of pressure coefficient, which was p minus p infinity over q infinity, where q infinity is the Subsonic or the incompressible dynamic pressure, one half rho infinity to infinity squared. You can write this a slightly different way as one half uh, gamma p infinity. You just multiply and divide by gamma p infinity. You can now see that using the perfect gas law, you can write this in terms of the pressure and rho over gamma plus that infinity, uh, the infinity squared. And then since the free stream speed of sound is gamma infinity over rho infinity, then from the perfect gas law, it's possible to just write this as Q infinity is gamma over 2 P infinity, V infinity squared over A infinity squared. So this is just gamma over 2 P infinity L infinity squared. And this is something um, that's a useful thing to remember all the time, actually, is that for a perfect gas that one half rho v squared is equivalent to gamma over two p m squared. This is just from the definition of the ideal gas law and of the speed of sound. So then if we put that into our pressure coefficient distribution, or definition, I should say, then we get this. Two over gamma m infinity squared times p over p infinity minus 1. Now here we still haven't made any simplifying assumptions. But since we have our adiabatic flow of a calorically perfect gas, we can use our definition of stagnation pressure to say that p plus v squared over 2cp is equal to p infinity plus v infinity squared over 2cp. And from our definition of cp in terms of gamma and r, we can say that t minus t infinity is v infinity squared minus v squared over 2 gamma r divided by gamma minus 1. Now, and since the uh, free stream speed of sound is just square root of gamma r t infinity, then t over t infinity minus 1 can be written as gamma minus 1 over 2 v infinity squared minus v squared over gamma r t infinity, which is gamma minus 1 over 2 v infinity squared minus v squared over a infinity squared. And also v squared, just from our perturbation based definition, can be written this way. Then that says that t over t infinity is 1 minus gamma minus 1 over 2a infinity squared, which is 2u hat v infinity 
plus u hat squared plus v hat squared. Now our Fose isentropic, so p over p infinity is equal to t over t infinity to the gamma over gamma minus one, right? From the isentropic relations. So then we can say that p over p infinity one minus gamma minus one over two m infinity squared v u hat okay, two v u hat v infinity plus u hat squared plus v hat squared over v infinity squared all to the, over, to the power of gamma over gamma minus one. And now we make our assumptions that u over v, u hat over v infinity is small and u hat squared over v infinity squared and v hat squared over v infinity squared are also small. Then what we can get is that we can say that p over p infinity is going to be equal to sort of one minus some quantity epsilon To the gamma over gamma minus one, where epsilon is much smaller than one. Now, here we're going to pull out some maybe slightly obscure math and use the binomial expansion for the above expression, keeping the first two terms only. So now we're introducing something more approximate. Then what we get is p over p infinity is approximately one minus gamma over gamma minus one times epsilon plus other terms that we're not going to include. With the ellipsis, this becomes an equals. So then p over p infinity can be written, putting this in, one minus gamma over two m infinity squared times v u hat, again 2, not v, 2 u hat over v infinity plus u hat squared plus v hat squared over v squared uh, v infinity squared plus other terms. And if we put this into our equation for the pressure coefficient, We can get that CP is 2 over gamma infinity squared times 1 minus gamma over 2 m infinity squared 2 u hat v infinity plus u hat squared plus v hat squared all over v squared infinity plus additional terms minus 1 so that CP is minus two u hat over v infinity minus u hat squared plus v hat squared over v infinity squared. Um, but these terms are small, so we can drop that one, and this gives us that our approximate pressure coefficient is minus two u hat over v infinity. So this is a linearized pressure coefficient. Note the striking thing about this result is that there's no dependence on the y perturbation velocity v hat. Now what are the boundary conditions for our simplified linearized flow? Basically we know that the perturbation potential must be a constant at infinity, which is just a way of saying that u hat equals v hat equals zero there, and we have to have flow tangency on the body. So if we've got 
reinfinity coming in. There's our body. Hopefully there's some angle theta here, which is the angle between the body surface and the free stream. Then we can write that tan theta is V over U. That's V hat over V infinity plus U hat. And under the small perturbation uh, assumptions, this gives us that V hat, it, which is D, D hat dy is equal to V infinity tan theta. So now we have a linearized governing equation, a linearized pressure coefficient, and a linearized version of the boundary conditions. With this, moving forward, we'll be able to develop analytical expressions for the behavior of airfoils in compressible flows, and we'll do that starting next time.